I'm here today to talk about Robin Williams and depression and other topics related to this. Since yesterday afternoon, I've been hearing about Robin Williams, how he died, and his fellow colleagues are shocked. And that depression took over and suicide won. He became a casualty of, men of mental illness. I deal with mental illness every day. I deal with the best way I can. I mean, there's times I've had my medication changed. You go to therapy and then you see the doctor who gives you the pills every three months. But he, it surprised me he's battled a lot in his life and his career. He, he battled drugs, he battled divorce, heart problems, you know, other things. And that he was a talented, gifted man who went to Juilliard to hone his craft. Because you just don't get in because you know how to play an instrument or something. You have to get in there and show them what you're made of. I have to sympathize with people who suffer from depression and they think that suicide is the only way out. Believe me, it isn't. And I know all too well why they do it anyway. Because they just can't deal with, with life. It doesn't care about what car you drive, what kind of job you have who you are, uh, how many dogs you have or pets have in your house, and how, and that you have a big family or a little family. It doesn't give a damn who you are. We may never know what drove him to suicide. All we know is that the, he had depression and was probably taking medication for it. We may never know. We may know. We may not know. But people like Kurt Cobain and, you know, Robin Williams, they have a career. They had a career. They had fame, success, and then something like depression brings it all down. I mean, sometimes it's great to, to want more in life. And sometimes when you don't get it, you get depressed about it. And then you fight for it. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. To me, depression is this big monster that con that consumes you. It's saying, well, you have all this luxury. I want more. And then you get happy and want, you get unhappy and want more. And you don't know why. I've lost a lot of people to depression. I've, I've lost some good people, people that were close to my heart, people I haven't seen in years. I know it's in my family on both sides. And it can be a problem because when I grew when I grew up with it, they thought it was different. They thought it was something worse. I mean, growing up in elementary school, I did not have a wonderful time. It, you know, I played with kids, I, I hung out, I did things, excuse me, I did things maybe to get myself in a little tr bit of trouble. I mean, back then, little girls shouldn't behave like this and shouldn't behave like that, but I never saw it that way. When it came to schoolwork, you know, they did all they could to, to brand me. Not help me, brand me. And... And I went to doctors, you know, they said that it'll go away. You don't need medication. By the time I became a teenager, it was a, it was a problem. It became a problem. And I was taking medication, and it did pretty good. When I grew up and got older, I was dealing with issues at home. And it kind of really destroyed my faith in positive thinking. Because I listen to the people that say negative things and that hurts when they're the people close to you and your family. That hurts the worst. Because you want them to be on your side and be in your circle, but they, they don't want to be there. The only way they want to be there is just, you know, talk you know, talk down to you. And by the time I was thirty I just barely I was to a point where I barely didn't want to even get out of bed. I just went I would get out of the bed just to get something to eat and go to the bathroom. 
let alone, you know, take a shower or something. And then over years, I got better. Some days I have my bad days where I just want to break down and cry. But this isn't about, you know, me or Robin Williams or Kurt Cobain. It's about depression itself. It saddens me that, you know, he's gone. But it makes me happy that he leaves a lot of things behind. He, you know, his art will last forever. And that's the way it should be. But it's sad because you, you, you think to yourself, they could have, you know, they could have, you know, if they didn't die, they could have offered us more. You know, more movies, more of this, more of that. But I think Robin Williams did more than just that. He offered us more. You know, but we will never know that. You know, people, you know, who are famous and they, they felt, they commit suicide. You always ask yourself, you know, they could have done more. They could have done this or they could have done that. But they gave all and that's something we have to live with. And just accept it as so. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a doctor. But I know it's a battle. It's, it's an eternal struggle of you know what's right and what's wrong it becomes you know you become your own worst enemy and, and it, it becomes the war inside your head you either become a casualty by death or you do what you can to live around it I'm not saying it's easy it's, it's never easy it's always going to be there but you can't let it consume you suicide is an easy way out I, I know all too well I know. I know why they do it. They're desperate. They want to hang on to what's left before they die. And I'm not here to cry or, you know, get on my little pedestal. I'm just, you know, you know, airing out or expressing myself. You know, I'm saddened that he's gone but not forgotten. I mean... When, when I was growing up, I watched Mork and Mindy when I was a kid, and I got a Mork and Mindy doll that following Christmas. And then by the time I was in high school, he did serious acting. I mean, he was flexible. It, it's, you know, it's a hard thing to be flexible, especially in Hollywood, but it it's what gets you the fame, it's what gets you the, the success, It what it's what gives you the respect from your colleagues and what can I say a lot of ants <laughs> I've dealt with it and I've had people in my family that dealt with it with death and I won't go into that I had an uncle who was on medication was going through a painful divorce and when he found out that his, that his son wasn't really his son it took him over the line just to find him four days later dead in his closet you know and he had the rifle in his hand you know just barely dropping the you know from his hand to to his elbow and that was a long time ago I was like 14 at the time I was a freshman in high school and it haunted me for a lot of years because you gotta think to yourself you know, maybe I didn't do more. Maybe I didn't do enough. But I had to look at it and say, you did what you had to do. You did all you could. There is help out there. There is treatment. But sometimes, you know, there comes a day when it takes over and you got to learn to yourself, I will not let, let this beat me. I will, I will win. And if you're suicidal and you're depressed... I suggest you go to counseling. There's a lot of you know places out there that will help you. Get the right treatment, get medicine. In this Obamacare that we live in, one thing ha has remained the same. There is hope out there. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. But there are people that are willing to listen, willing to talk to you, where where you know, willing to help you. You know, there is. I used to feel alone, but I'm not anymore. 
And if I could say to Robin Williams, if, if I could say something, I would say you were one of kind. And I don't know, like I said, maybe he got help, maybe he didn't, I don't know. But if I had something to say, I would say get help. You don't have to fight alone, you don't have to deal, deal with this by yourself. And hang on, hang on as long as you can. I know it sounds like, you know, easy, but it's not. All I can say for those who are suffering, there is help, there is hope. You're not alone. So I guess I said my, my word, so I will see you next time on the next video. Bye-bye.